Hello, this is Jenny Hillrung. I'm the host for your webinar today, brought to you by the ASQ Statistics Division. Um, the topic is statistical process control. The uh, speaker is Daksha Chakji. She is an Aerojet Rocketdyne Technical Fellow in Statistical Methods and Quality Technologies with multi-division, multi-site involvement. She holds three master's degrees, one in management of technology, one in industrial engineering, and a third in mathematical statistics. She is also a PhD candidate in industrial engineering and an elected fellow of the American Society of Quality, also a member of the American Statistical Association. So she should uh, be well qualified to give the talk today. Um, a couple of housekeeping items, um, if you could keep your self on mute today, that would be great. If you have questions that come up, you can type those in for us and we will answer those at the end of the presentation, as many as we have time for. And with that, I'll turn it over to Daksha. Thank you, Jenny. Uh, welcome, everyone. <laughs> so today I'm going to talk about uh, Statistical process control meets misconceptions and applications. So the primary objectives for this presentation are, uh, first I will review the concept of uh, statistical process control and why we need to practice it. Then I will discuss the myths and misconceptions about the SPC and how we can mitigate them. Uh, along with that one, we will also see some real work setting case studies and success stories with key learning points and benefits. Uh, the major takeaway from this presentation is to gain an appreciation of how SPC can be effectively used to understand and quantify our processes objectively and enhance the resultant products and services to realize bottom line benefits. So uh, let's discuss briefly what is statistical process control or SPC. So statistical process control is an analytical method of controlling and monitoring processes. It helps, it uses statistical tools to measure, quantify, minimize, and control the amount of variation in our processes. So the major thrust of SPC is understanding, controlling and managing the variation. So what is variation? Variation exists in every operation, in every processes. It is a natural phenomenon. There is a variation in all aspects of our life, in our personal lives, in the performance of people, in the economy, and in our organization. For example, does it take you the same time every day to commute to work? The answer is no. Today it might took me 30 minutes, tomorrow it might be 28 minutes, next day it might be 33 minutes. It all depends on the circumstances of variation. Sometimes this variation we can see with our naked eyes and sometimes we need like a sensitive measuring device. For example, if we weigh two cookies by hand, it might feel the same, but if we have a measuring device, it will be different. So all the processes are subject to variation. We must Keep in mind that variation cannot be entirely eliminated, but it can be controlled within acceptable limits. Uh, so understanding and managing and reducing variation, it, it is extremely important. It leads to improved quality, reduced cost, and reduced cycle time. Uh, 
uh, that leads to customer satisfaction, competitive, competitiveness, and the growth. Just, thus, SPC enables robustness, efficiency, and affordability, as well as provides other strategic benefits like innovation and smart technology portfolio. So now we are going to move to the myths and misconceptions. What I have done, these myths and misconceptions, I categorize into three categories, infrastructure, applicability, and the technical. So first, I'm going to discuss uh, some myths and misconceptions related with the infrastructure. So the first misconception, you know, uh, when I started uh, 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 my career, you know, I started in research and development arena, low volume arena. So the first misconception I came across regarding the infrastructure is that 100% inspection is the same as or better than implementing statistical process control. So this misconception is not true. 100% inspection is not equal to SPC. Uh, Use of SPC reduces the notion of goalpost theory that is produced to the blueprint. If it is in tolerance, it is good and focuses on the process variation that results in creating a dynamic culture of process improvement, evolution, and innovation. So we need to shoot for the target to nominal approach rather than the goal post theory. Also, we need to keep in mind that all data occur in time and neglecting the time order information causes us to lose valuable information which could be used to improve the process. For example, over here, if you just view this histogram, everything looks uh, uh, fine, but the same data, if you plot some kind of a time order, you know, it shows you kind of like a, a trend, and this trend might be good or bad, depends on the process, you know, depends on the characteristics you are studying. The second misconception is our processes provide 99% yield, which is good enough. This misconception is not true. Let's think about it. Why is 99% not good enough? Would we be happy with 20,000 lost articles of a mail per hour, unsafe drinking water almost 15 hours per day, 5,000 incorrect surgical operations per week, too short or long landings at most major airports, 200,000 wrong drunk prescription each year, no electricity for almost seven hours, seven hours each month. I won't be happy with this one. Also, here is another example. Can you guess what person ill rate this process will provide? Let's say we have a value stream that contains the 100 steps. <laughs> And each step have a 99% yield rate. So, and we are starting with like a hundred perfect castings. So, how many castings would flow all the way through all the steps uh, without uh, uh, without any turn back, scrap, or interruptions? Zero, one, two, ten. Take a guess. So the answer is 37, 63 castings get interrupted. Isn't this amazing? 99% might sound good, but it can yield terrible results. And what drives this one? Variation. So it is extremely important we understand and quantify the variation and do something about it. The Third misconception about the infrastructure related is SPC implementation requires a lot of resources. 
the resources needed to implement the SPC varies. Primarily, we have like a two activities to focus on when we implement the SPC. Uh, the uh, first one is to baseline the process and then improve the process. Uh, when we talk about improve the process, that is to achieve the state of statistical control and then achieve the desired capability indices uh, to compare the voice of the process with the voice of the customer. Now, all these things depends on the complexity of the process, the initial condition of the process, uh, how well defined the process is, uh, if the initial condition of the process is good, if process is well defined, then it might not take much time at all. Uh, also, the condition of the historical data, uh, the building the data uh, quality pipeline is always challenging. So, if the condition of the historical data is good, it might not take much time at all. Uh, condition of the measurement process and ability of the right uh, ability and availability of the right resources you know so the right resources are really really important you know uh, and the rate of the production so if the rate of the production is very low then it might take a little longer than the rate of the production is higher uh, the last one I put it down in this category is once a process is under statistical control and capable, I am done. Now, <laughs> the process is, uh, has a natural tendency to migrate towards like an ideal state to the chaos state because of the force of the entropy. And this force of the entropy Entropy leads to the deterioration over the time. That's why we need to have like a periodic monitoring to sustain the gains. So, uh, this is like a really simple, I tell everyone that if we want to clean our house periodically, is it going to stay clean? The answer is no. So just like we need to uh, do the periodic uh, uh, maintenance to our processes to sustain the gains. Now, the uh, next four uh, myths and misconceptions that relates with the applicability. Uh, when I started it, you know, people were saying, yes, it is a very nice tool, but it doesn't apply in my arena, you know. Uh, it's only applicable to the high volume manufacturing processes. Uh, that is not true. Uh, it does apply in the low volume arena too. It does apply to research and uh, development arena, onesies and twos arena. Uh, it only depends on like a, uh, how we concentrate on our processes. So in, in this one, we need to concentrate on the processes, not on the product. And I tell to the people that when we have like a research and development arena or one Zs and two Zs and low volume arena, we need to do this kind of uh, things more because we cannot afford to uh, scrap uh, any of the parts, uh, whatever this low volume, processes produce. In this one, what we need to do, we need to understand the process generality activities that produce the different products. Uh, study and monitor the most important characteristics and work with the standardized dimensions rather than the actual reported dimensions. Uh, there are quite a bit of a short run SPC charts and techniques available. You know, there are these are like uh, some of the examples uh, for the short run SPC charts for the variable data. Uh, this is like a target to nominal chart, Z chart, or Z, Z chart, Z star chart, and so on. And there are also some of the techniques available for the low volume attribute data as well. So focusing on the process, not the product, is the key to implementing SPC in low volume environments. 
Uh, the this one I also get the quite often. SPC does not apply to business processes. SPC can be used for any kind of a process, whether it is a manufacturing process, assembly process, space process, or a business process. When we have like a manufacturing processes, we need to focus on the part requirements and the key characteristics uh, can be like a thickness, flow, strength, diameter, dimensions, and so on, you know. Uh, for the assembly processes, we can focus on the feet and functionality, like the joining processes that falls under this category, you know, and we can uh, measure like a bond strength, uh, clearances, gaps, fit up dimensions, leakage, uh, and so on. Uh, the uh, next, uh, the te for the test processes, uh, we need to focus on the performance. Uh, in this one, we can measure like a vibration, uh, flow, uh, taste system, maintenance, thrust, uh, and so on. And the last one is like a business category. In this one, focus on the business goals, you know. Uh, I turn to the people for the business processes, we can always measure in terms of the three things. Quality, cost, and schedule. Quality we can always measure in terms of the errors, uh, turnbacks, uh, 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 those kind of a things. Uh, for the uh, schedule, we can measure like a lead time, cycle time, uh, time to completion, and so on. And the cost is the function of quality and the schedule. So. Uh, we can apply the SPC for any kind of a process. So let's discuss a little bit about the similarities and key differences among the operations versus the business processes. When I say the operations, uh, this include uh, manufacturing, assembly, and the taste processes. Uh, both types of these processes can have key process input key process outputs and associated characteristics. Both types of processes are evaluated for quality, cost, and schedule. Both kind of processes use statistical thinking and statistical tools, and both types of processes need to make the uh, data-driven decision. So these are some of the similarities. So let's look at now what are the key differences uh, for the business and the transactional processes, attribute data is more typical, while for the operation processes, variable data are more available. For the business side, the requirements are typically one-sided, one side of something, you know, and generally for the operation processes, the requirements are usually two-sided. Uh, for the business processes, uh, facts and data, not readily available, hard to decide KPOs, KPIs, uh, key characteristics. For the operations, the data are readily available, uh, easy to identify KPOs and KPIs and KCs. Now, look at the next three bullets. You know, for the business processes, river cost consume 50% of the total budget versus 20% for the operation processes. Yields run 50 to 90% versus uh, 90 to 99% and 10% uh, cycle time devoted to real work for the business processes, while for the operation processes, 70 to 85% cycle time devoted to real work. So uh, you can see where we can where we can have like a big opportunities. Uh, so it equally applies for the operations as well as for the business processes. Uh, SPC is only for large suppliers and the large companies. Now here, when I used to go to the supplier, that's what supplier used to tell me that, oh, we are a very uh, small supplier, you know, uh, we cannot apply the SPC over here, you know, uh, but SPC applies 
regardless of the size uh, of the company because every company has a uh, operations as well as the business processes uh, uh, regardless of the size every company wants to uh, produce the good part and work efficiently uh, by managing and understanding the uh, variation and um, so uh, definitely it applies equally to the small companies uh, and i tell to the people that hey variation is a variation and process is a process is you know it doesn't matter whether it is a small company large company business process or the operation processes okay so last one in this category is uh, spc only applies to variable data it does not apply to attribute data uh, so this is also like a misconception uh, spc equally applies to the attribute data as well uh, and uh, most of the time for the business processes we will get the attribute data and most of us know that hey uh, for the spc when we use the control chart you know uh, what kind of a control chart depends to use depends on the type of the data and the type of the application and the physics of the process you know so for the variable data yes we know that uh, we can do like a individual and moving grain chart or x bar and r chart or x bar and s chart depending on the subgroup sample size you know so the same thing with the uh, attribute data yes we have like a, a the four traditional control charts the np chart p chart uh, c chart and the u chart you know and uh, depending on the application whether we have like a defect or the defect is we can use one of these four charts and also uh, also we can be little bit creative and come up with like a the uh, chart for the uh, low volume attribute data uh, over here you know we did come up with like a prediction c chart prediction u chart hypergeometric and p chart and hypergeometric p chart for the uh, attribute uh, data uh, so now uh, what i am going to discuss is like a uh, some of the uh, myths and misconception that is related with the uh, uh, technical aspects of it you know so uh, the first one is like a specific and specification limits are the same as the control limits so, now <clears throat> this is not <laughs> true the specification limits uh, are not the same as the control limit <clears throat> control limits is the voice of the process you know it derive we derive the control limits from the real process data the control limit tells us what process is doing what process is performing it doesn't care about the specification limits versus the specification limits <clears throat> uh, they are like a engineering requirement or the customer requirements you know that is like a voice of the customer so those two are not the same you know they two are the different thing and also we need to keep in mind that engineering specification limits do not belong on a control chart unless we have just the individual uh, control chart now the other three misconceptions in these categories uh, uh, they what i did in this one is i'm discussing this uh, uh, technical misconception the next three technical misconception providing the case studies so we will uh look at uh, these three misconceptions with the real case study so uh, for the uh, this one is a real technical misconception so uh, uh generally some of the people you know 
what they think that we need to first compute the process capability in diocese to assess our processes. Now, this misconception is not true. <laughs> this mis misconception is definitely false. So over here, uh, we have, uh, wait a minute. <laughs> okay, so uh, I cannot see my whole screen over here, so you just bear with me. <laughs> so uh, over here, uh, the question we need to answer is, are we meeting the customer requirements? So they provided this dashboard for product A, and this one is telling that, hey, uh, characteristics, characteristic A, characteristic B, and characteristic C. So you can see characteristic A and B, that is in a red zone, uh, because the PPK is less than one, while characteristic C, the PPK is between one and 1 1.33. So for that one, we need to establish return to green plan. So that kind of action we need to take it for characteristics A and B, it requires the immediate action uh, inform the program management office and establish return to green plant and implement corrective action and take it. That's what the direction uh, the management provided uh, for the all the uh, all the uh, uh, products uh, they are manufacturing. So over here, oh God, wait a minute. Okay. So uh, over here, what we need to do first, we need to do first like uh, the control chart. We need to figure it out, the, our processes are in statistical control or not. Statistical uh, process control means all the variation is coming only due to the common causes. We don't have any assignable cause, any unnatural patterns inside the control limit. So first we need to assess the variability in the control chart. So over here, if you look at all these control charts, the characteristic A, characteristic B, and characteristic C, they are not under statistical control. So we need to identify a probabilistic region in which the process has changed. And we over here use the Bayesian change point approach to figure it out, you know, that when this process has changed. So uh, using this approach, you know, and this is for like a characteristic A, we figured it out that, hey, uh, uh, to, that we can see two statistically two statistically significant change points. One is right over here, and the another one is right over here. So what it says that 95% we are 95% confident that the second process change occurred between the observation 24th and 30th. You know, rather than just eyeballing the data point, you know, that when this change point occurred, you know, we are using the Bayesian technique, so it can give us like a probabilistic region so that people can go and figure it out that did they change anything between this 24th and 30th observation. Uh, also, we notice that, hey, uh, it, the data might not be not uh, not normally distributed, but the log scale was not necessary necessary after the processes were considered. So over here for the characteristic, according to this uh, Bayesian group, you know, uh, we divided into like a three groups, and you can see over here that uh, uh, the processes under uh, statistical control. Uh, considering the Bayesian groups, and also we can see that that uh, mean and variances are signif significantly different 
due to the Bayesian group. Uh, but the process is under statistical control for each group. You know, we can see all, we can also see that the uh, data is normally distributed for each group, and you can see uh, the PTK for each group over here. So uh, before, you know, when we were looking at the characteristic A, the PTK was less than one because the process wasn't under uh, uh, control. So it was giving us like an inflated estimate of PTK. So uh, in summary, uh, what this one tells us? So this one tells us that, uh, Hey, uh, okay. Uh, this one tells us that understand the behavior of the process to com uh, to compute the process capability indices. You know, we uh, we need to understand uh, uh, what is the behavior of the process looks like. You know, whether the process is under statistical control or not prior to computing the process capability. Uh, then we need to identify the probabilistic region in which the process has changed to uncover the trends and see to get the true picture of the process. Uh, we always need to ensure first whether the process is under statistical control or not. Then we need to uh, check the distribution assumptions and then we need to compute the process capability indices. Okay, so the next misconception in this category is SPC and capability studies don't require understanding and modeling of underlying distribution. So, uh, just like in the previous case study, you know, uh, I did uh, mention that, hey, first we need to figure it out whether the process is under statistical control or not. Then we need to figure it out the distribution and then we need to compute the process capability. So it is extremely important that we also need to understand the physics of the process. So this case study relates with the valve testing process. So uh, in this one, the question we had it was like, hey, should we have stopped the production? Uh, this is kind of a leakage data. And uh, 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 when you look at these individual and moving range chart for the valve leakage, you know, um, in this one, we can see that this lower control limit, it uh, doesn't make much sense over here because if you look at the leakage, you know, can leakage be less than zero? Can leakage be negative? The answer is no. So this one, the physics of the process, you know, it tells us that, hey, this data, won't show the normal distribution, you know, so we need to take that one into the account and figure it out uh, what control chart will be appropriate for this kind of a data. So uh, we looked at this data and probability plot, histogram, and the context of the data that indicates like a non normality. So leakage data in this case, you know, it either follows the log normal distribution or the log logistic distribution. So we came up with the control chart that is based on the log normal distribution. And when we look at now this chart, uh, it, uh, it tells us that, hey, process is under statistical control and everything is fine. And uh, definitely we came up with the rules and everything uh, based on this log normal distribution. So uh, in summary for this case study, uh, we need to understand the restriction of the data and the framework of the process. Uh, traditional charts do not provide the true picture and the capability of the process. Uh, 
using uh, for the var leakage data uh, the log normal distribution and control chart and capability study based on the log normal distribution indicates the process is stable and predictable and capable of meeting customer requirements so we might give might get this kind of applications quite often the another example is like a the uh, joining processes for example if we have like a bracing process can uh, brace coverage be less than 0% the answer is no can it be higher than 100% the answer is no so this one doesn't follow the normal distribution the context of the data tells us Uh, that hey it won't follow the normal distribution so uh, this one will follow the beta distribution because that is bounded on the two side you know so we need to uh, come up with the control charts and the capability study based on this uh, context of the uh, uh, data or the physics of the process so definitely it is very important we understand the restriction of the data and the framework of the process so uh, the the last misconception i put it down in this category is it is it is not important to understand the context of the data and the data collecting operating Uh, data collection operating system uh, it is uh, uh, extremely important uh, just like in the previous example i said that we need to understand the context of the data and the data collection operating system that's what basically uh, this case study will discuss and this is kind of like a business uh, business case study so of course the that misconception is not true so uh, this case study as i said relates with the business measurement in this one we need to answer the question should we eliminate the product x you know so over here we have a self report for product x uh, this one says that hey in january 2017 you know uh, the dollar sales were like a 2800 uh, uh, million or thousand or whatever you know but says like in january 2018 we have only 2150 uh, there is like a, a 23.2% uh, uh, drop in a sales dollars you know so uh, uh, definitely when somebody will see this kind of a snapshot report it can cause lots of discussions and emotions that hey what happened you know uh, how can we accept uh, this big drop you know and uh, maybe uh, the senior leadership you know might tell the people to find it out this big drop uh, so uh, how this is just a snapshot you know so how we can make little bit more intelligent decision you know rather than relying this uh, snapshot so uh, let's start ch- charting this uh, uh, monthly sales uh, on a control chart you know so when you look at this monthly sales on the control chart uh, you can see like a completely different picture of these two months you know uh, january 2018 uh, sales almost average for all the sales you know uh, looks like the system is quite stable over the 13 month period uh, uh, while january 2017 and january 2018 are certainly different numbers but the same process produce both the numbers thus it would be in general a waste of time to determine the root cause for the difference that why we had a sell in january 18 uh, uh, why we had a drop in a sales like a 23.2% now somebody also brought the attention 
that hey each month have like a, a, a different selling days you know so if we look at the picture uh, by looking at the every daily sales per month or month over here uh, uh, we can answer the question like does the number of selling days make a difference so uh january 2018 very close to an averaging uh, average performing month but chart shows the signal that hey january 2017 had unusually high average daily sell so what does it tells me over here that definitely we missed the opportunity over here that hey what happened in this month you know why figure it out the reason that why that uh, self was higher you know so uh, even though this like a, a kind of like a assignable cause or a special cause you know uh, so the lesson over here is that hey assignable cause or the special cause is uh, not always uh, necessarily bad you know so uh, in summary for this case study that we need to understand the context of the data uh it is really hard to uh determine this point or the last uh, uh last point or the this period or the last period with the two point comparison it just provides a snapshot it's not provide it is not providing us the moving picture of the process uh, without the chart we cannot uh, know if 23.2% drop in sales indicate the real change in the process so uh, uh, we also need to understand the data collection operating system in this example we must take into account the different number of selling days in some month or you can miss the signal that something unusual has occurred so uh, in this example uh, unusually high daily sales in january 17 we lost the opportunity to identify the cause of uh, unusually high sales and we can use we would have used this information to possibly improve the overall sales effort so the moral over here is as i mentioned not all the assignable causes are ne uh, necessarily bad so uh, that uh, okay, let me see yeah my screen acting funny uh, <clears throat> so uh these are like a, some of the misconceptions i discussed you know there might be more but i thought that uh, i will categorize into like a three categories and i chose like a, a four misconceptions in each category but uh, definitely there might be more too you know uh, especially like a, in the uh, technical category you know um so in conclusion Uh, statistical process control is a powerful tool to control and monitor any kind of a processes you know it does apply to the operations processes when i say operation uh, it is like a manufacturing the uh, assembly and the test processes as well as it also applies to the business processes uh, it applies to the high volume arena versus also in the low volume arena research and development arena uh it also applies to the processes uh, which produce like a uh, attribute data versus the variable data um uh, implementing the good spc practices provide instantaneous feedback with actionable information it enhances the problem solving abil abilities and which provides in uh, Uh, improved quality cost and schedule and uh, also it is up to us to mitigate like a myths and misconceptions you know via training uh, and standard work uh, 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 if we have like a good standard work that also allows the proper use of spc tools leading robust business decision making and 
that allows us reaping reaping efficiency and affordability benefits you know i always tell to the people that it's not that people they don't want to do something you know uh, they really wanted to contribute to the efficiency and affordability aspects of it you know uh, but they sometimes they don't know about these tools you know so uh, that's why this uh, myths and misconception exist so uh, we can uh, mitigate this one you know via training you know providing the training in the concept theory and the tools you know so that is kind of like a, the communication aspect of it you know also like a Uh, we can encourage the use of this kind of a tools you know uh, by uh, uh, sharing the uh, success stories and the case studies and uh, so on so i think this is my last slide uh, so uh, i did decide like uh, i will <laughs> finish my presentation in 45 minutes so it leave like a plenty of time for the questions you know if you guys have it you know Hi, Daksha. There is one question. Um, the slide on page three seems to compare um, QC limits with control limits, and uh, the question was that intended to compare those. Uh, which one? Slide three. Yes. Oh, I'm going to be. Oh. uh see the control chart you know uh that one shows like a control limit for the left hand side pictures you know and the right hand side you know it shows like a the histogram with the uh normal distribution so that is kind of like a process capability so this one compares kind of like a voice of the process with the voice of the customer you know so ability of a process to meet the customer requirement that is the process capability so that that's what the uh, uh, uh that's why the uh, it shows the specification limits over there you know but on the control chart it doesn't show the specification limit uh yeah the intent of the second chart is you know uh, to compare the voice of the process with the voice of the customer great we have time for a few more questions if anybody wants to type in any other questions Okay, we're not getting any other questions, so I think we'll wrap it up for today. Thanks, Daksha, for the the great webinar, and thanks everyone for attending the webinar. Um, I hope you all enjoyed it. Yeah, um, and uh, if anybody has a question, I did put it down like uh, my email address, you know. So if you uh, have any other questions later on, you know, you can just email it to me. Great. Okay, thanks everyone. We'll hang up now. Thank you Jenny. Thank you.